Hey everyone and welcome back to this new tutorial. In this video we are going to see how we can make an exterior render inside Twinmotion. We are going to see how to add vegetation, what materials to use, the reflection probes and the export settings. You can find the timestamps for each section at the bottom of the timeline. Hey guys, my name is Arne. And welcome to this new video. Let's start by looking at how you can add vegetation and which way fits best into your exterior scene. Let's start with the scatter tool. I usually use this for the rough work. With this tool you can easily shape very large pieces of land. It is important that you take the drawing layers into account from the very beginning of your design. For example, you can put all the ground surface where the grass is going to come into a layer, the roads into another layer, the building in another layer and so on. So you can use the isolate function and work easily with the scatter tool. Now how does the scatter tool work? You drag and drop a few plans from the twin motion library into the toolbox. Now select all your plans in the toolbar and then click on the plus symbol and then on the place where you want to color it. If you want a denser filling you have to keep clicking until you get a desired result. If you want a less denser filling then click with the minus symbol. Now that you have placed the rough work, you can refine it with the gum tool. You can do this for example at the edges of a sidewalk. The paint tool. I usually use the paint tool for filling up or for planting shrubs or larger crops. Especially for filling, this is an easy option. Just look at this piece of grass without the paint tool, so only with the scatter tool. With the extra painted grass, this looks much fuller and more natural. With the paint tool you can easily add some shrubs into your scene. This is not very accurate, so you will have to use the gum tool again for the details. You can also adjust the density or the size of the plant in the menu on the right. The green triangles you see on the ground show you where the plants will be placed. For example, if you have a forest you won't see all the trees in the distance, but you will see the triangles. This means that there's actually trees there, but these are hidden to get more working speed. There's also an option in the preferences that you can change. Note that this can slow down the working speed. This of course depends on how strong your computer is. When you are finished and you set up a render, any tree or plant in the distance will appear on the render anyway. So this is just to be able to work more efficiently inside Twinmotion. The isolate function also works great with the paint tool. For example, you can isolate the ground layer and then paint directly over it with a big brush, without painting over any other object. My preference goes to the scatter tool and then refining it with the paint tool. Finally, you have the drag and drop function. This is the last one, to add extra detail or to place accurate plants. I use this technique very often because it's so accurate. A handy tip is to put all the loose pieces together inside a group. This will keep your scene organized. Every time you add a tree or a plant, it will be different in size, color and rotation. This way there will be no repetition. You can also select multiple trees at the same time and then you can keep clicking without having to select the tree or plant every time again. This is very handy. Here there will also be a difference in size, color and rotation. If your menu jumps away each time, you can fix it by clicking on the lock button in the menu. This can save you a lot of time. Now on to the materials and the reflection probes. Let's start with a few materials. The materials for the buildings have a high reflective value each time. This is to create a lighter and fresher effect. For the windows, I use the reflective glass material. This material does not create a natural reflection, but allows you to see less into the building itself. Just look at the difference with the standard two-sided glass material. This is the advantage that you don't have to fill the whole building with interiors, because you can't really look inside. You can still play around with the opacity of the material. Try to keep it as natural as you can, that would be my tip. Now perhaps to the most requested topic. The reflection probes. First of all, you have to check if your settings are correct. 
If you go to the preferences, you can adjust the reflection volume resolution. The higher the resolution, the better the reflection will be. This can, in some cases, also be less if the reflection does not have to be as sharp. In this scene, I combine different reflection probes to give an approximately correct image. This will never be correct because you have to combine different probes together. Let's have a look at a smaller scene. Here, it is easier to get a correct image of the surroundings. Ok, let's go back to the apartment buildings to see how I manage the probes. Some scenes I edited separately. By this I mean that I have used some separate probes for each scene. Instead of using a large probe, I use different small ones to create a complete picture. Let's zoom in on this part. You can see that I have several probes standing in front of my windows. This has a simple reason. Every time you place a probe, it makes a 360 image around it. If you would have only one probe, you would create a much too zoomed in image. This is unrealistic. Therefore, place more than one probe and make sure that the image around you looks correct. Once you have placed a few reflection probes, you can start playing around with the settings. Most of the settings speak for themselves. The size option stands for the place where the reflection is going to be seen. Also, the bigger you make it, the more the reflection itself zooms in. I would say test a few settings by playing around with the slider. The same goes for the brightness and the transition. Keep it as natural as possible by taking the eye level into account. Also, for the brightness, if it is a rainy day, make sure the reflection is a bit darker to match the bad weather. However, the update function is important. If you place a probe and make adjustments to the scene, you have to update it manually, otherwise it still shows the old reflection. You can do this in different ways. The first option is easy by clicking the update button. Or you can tick and uncheck the eye in the menu of the scene graph, and it should be normally updated again. This rule also applies in the media menu. Here, you also need to update the reflection probes if you make any changes into your model. This can be annoying, so make sure that you update your probe before starting a render. And now a few light and export settings. Usually, this is quite standard for me. A slight addition to the exposure for that extra light effect. The temperature is set at 7300 Kelvin, so a slightly warmer tone. The GI setting is still at its default value. The shadows are set at 100 meters. A too sharp shadow is unrealistic in an exterior render. That's why I set it to around 100 here. In an interior render I would like to keep it as short as possible. The other settings are also very standard. My tip is to just test different settings, drag and drop each slider to see what changes and try again until you get a desired result. The camera settings are also quite standard. The most important setting here is the field of view, or the FOV. Usually I go for a number between 50 and 70. Of course this depends from scene to scene. For close-ups you need a lower number. Just try to not set it too high. Rather an extra clip than a completely zoomed out image. This way you can keep the customer or user attention for longer time. That's it for today guys, I hope this helps you out. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more Twinmotion content. And if this tutorial was helpful, please let me know in the comments down below.